Hey guys, and welcome to the High School Esports League. I am joined by my color coster, Frote, and I am Tico. Yep, guys, Jackson Frote Williams here, and Benjamin Tico Lee. We are here today for the High School E League. We are back from a short break. We're in stage two, week two. Let's go. Um, so what's happened is after the first, uh, after a few three rounds, we've had like a, a bunch of people win, a bunch of people lose. And we were starting to see uh, a kind of like a leaderboard as to who's who's doing fantastic, who's doing all right. And people had this small break to try and come up with new strategies, get uh, get their teams back in order and see how they can surprise everyone else. And of course, one of the things that's changed over the break is the patches. I, the, the bot lane has changed so much over the last month or two. It's been a humongous change. Yeah. So... 80 carries are now, well, to, in my own opinion, 80 carries are a lot weaker than they were before. This is because of items. This has been nerfed to champions as well. Recent patches, though, they've tried to increase their um, standing in the early game with base health increase. But I just don't think that's, that's enough to sort of bring them back into the meta. And now we've seen mid laners. This is, this is a quote from, I believe it was Reckless. Why? Because he benched himself. So the quote from Reckless is, why should I play in the bot lane when a mid, lane, mid laner can do my job better? Exactly, because uh, after all these nerfs that have happened to the ADC role, the champions that are strongest in the ADC role who are actual ADCs are Lucian, Ezreal, and Kai'Sa. A lot of other champions just get bullied out. And we do have, um, so we have champions like Aurelia, Swain, Yasuo, Bruiser champions that are just so strong in the bot lane because they're, oh, just in general, they're still able to harass. They've got a lot stronger laning phase. Even in a ranged matchup, they just out trade them, they out farm them, and they got those power, spell, power spikes so much earlier. You have an ADC, uh, often to stay relevant, you need to go the Storm Razor um, into, your, uh, into your single crit item, um, and then your Infinity Edge. So you've got a decent first on a power spike, you're irrelevant in the mid game. And then you finally come online at three items. By that time, in this meta, the game's already over. Yeah. So you see a lot of games already reaching its mid-late game by 20 minutes. And if it gets to 30 minutes, you feel like it's dragging on. And that's because the death timers are longer. It hasn't been changed since a long time ago. But we see that Riot's been pushing towards games that become shorter. We used to see 40-minute games, and they used to be normal. But now we're seeing 30-minute games with death timers at 40, 50 seconds. And, I mean, this is this is right trying to push for longer games, but it's not helping the AD carries if they have to reach their... when they reach their item spike by third item. Indeed. Uh, gone are the days where GK would stall the game out to 80 minutes. This is now League of... Oh, the league games, a long game lasts for 35 <laughs> minutes, uh, 40 minutes tops. And it's just because Baron is so strong, Rift is able to do so much damage. Baron is so easy to take. So you have to uh, you have to go for these objectives. And if you don't, it's just GG. Um, so of course we are seeing um we are seeing a few changes in uh oh in all the different um uh sorry, we're also, we are seeing a few changes in this bot lane though, because champions like Swain did get nerfed so his ultimate explosion doesn't do as much damage and you're seeing as as tico said before you're seeing the base health and uh and base stats of champions like jinx are getting buffed as well so that they can survive this early laning phase which has been just has been so detrimental to their entire like to these entire team comps um you were for what uh, for a while seeing uh i believe Golden Blue and Jensen on C9, for example, were playing uh, ADC and mid lane because, as Reckless said, you can get a mid laner just to play his role just, uh, just as well, if not better, in this current meta because of how weak ADCs are. Yeah, and so w the game that we're going to be focusing on today is the Melbourne High School versus Roxburgh College 1. And we've, we've casted Melbourne High School before. We've watched these guys play before. And... Um, we know that Melbourne High School has potential. We also know that Roxburgh has Roxburgh College 
had potential. So, I mean, this is going to be an interesting game. We do have, we do have some well-ranked players here. So, on the side of Roxburgh College, their highest player is in Diamond. Noxious, Mi Nox Noxious Might is in, yeah, is in Diamond too. And looking on the side of Melbourne High School, their highest is Platinum Four. 99.95 HR, I believe he's in the mid lane as well. So that is going to be a very, this is going to be a very interesting game to cast. Mm, indeed. And uh, I do believe it's, uh, one of the things I've noticed about high school E-League is they can flex their roles. Prono, for example, who is a plat 5 jungle main, um, actually has been playing ADC as of late. So there's a possibility of him playing that, uh, of him doing that. But one thing I am liking is the fact that we're seeing some very interesting names, like Thresh Produce, Sir Valence, like whoever came up with these names is very punny and it's it's quite quite enjoyable. Well, I believe that the players came up with their own names. That that you know that might be a possibility. Yes, I was getting to that, but it's the fact that it's like it's original names. Like it's 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 a lot better than names like a pregnant nun, you know? Like whoever came up with that, it's just like come on man. And and pro is so funny. Oh, Pro is very ingenious, to be honest. It's like I was looking at, uh, I was looking for the um, a, a name for my summer when I um, came back from Europe, and it's like, hmm. Looked around my house to see a, 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 a container of protein. I'm like, I, I can shorten that, and it's Pro. But anyway, we are into the pick and hands now. Melbourne High School E League is on the blue side. They do get their first pick, and of course, we do have Roxburgh College Team One is on the red side. And so we're going to see the first band coming out. This is going to be a Darius band coming out for the top lane. Of course, Darius band. Darius is so strong in this meta right now. And he is actually the, one of the few meta counters to Dr. Mundo, who's been wrecking it in our pro play. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Dr. Mundo coming out because Darius has been banned. His, his passive, his bleed is not going to be as useful because it's not there. <laughs> That's besides the case. We do see a must be Aatrox band coming out from Roxburgh, as well as a Rakan band. But on the side of Melbourne High School, we see a Warwick and Lucian. Indeed. So Aatrox, massive blue lane. Lucian, one of the few ADCs that's still relevant. Warwick, just a really strong jungler all around and still has, uh, still is really good with press the attack. Um, Rakan, amazing playmaker. And of course, the Yi, not as strong since the boosting strats have been nerfed, but still strong nonetheless if he gets that late game point. Yeah, but look at what we have. We have the two support... Oh, I, I, I hope that Pike is supporting this one. But we have two support lock-ins. The first round, we have a Pike and a Lulu. So it seems to be two opposite ends of the spectrum. On Pike, you have that amazing CC engage, great aggressive laning phase. So it, he does so much work. And he's also got a great uh, kill secure. Whereas on the other side, you have this Lulu purely utility um, wants to um get your adc to scale up and do that damage with a hyper carry um and with this ezreal pick it looks like we're not going for that auto attack based adc which goes really well with lulu but instead an on hit adc with the tier build yeah but we are also seeing a Jin coming out for prono and i love Jin. i love seeing Jin being played now storm razor would be a first obvious item you'd have crits on your first and fourth auto attack so that i mean Jin, he's coming back into the meta ezreal i haven't seen much of well as much as a meta 80 carry can be but let's see how this one goes we do have an oriana pick for voice of voiceless though mm. so Jin and pike in that lane you have got so much cc so you got the pike javelin followed up by the um Jin stun or oh, snare and then you have the pike snare as well so soon as you get hit by one uh, one javelin, you are going to be CC chained for days. If you want to play League of Legends as bot lane, you can't. But of course, with this Ariana as well, great utility, great blind pick, um, really good for poke damage as well as uh, that great shockwave engage. So Ariana does, at, oh, and with Pike as well, you have a great ball delivery system. All right, and we do see a cane coming out on the side of Roxburgh as well. So Surveillance is going to be able to pick out that vein in the jungle. We do see a Mundo band coming out, so that's not going to be picked. Indeed. And with the cane pick, you have great early game jungling because of his extremely high base stats. Um, and with the Mundo band, that just means that you do not have a safe blind pick in the top lane. You do not have this oppressive top laner that has been wrecking it lately. 
that we, now we do see another mid lane Ben coming out. This is going to be an Echo. I've seen much of him though. So Echo is one of those champions that can be, like, be played to a rare extent in the top lane, but he's all right in the jungle and all right in mid. With jungle, you go your uh, you go your um. Like your AP jungle item into uh, kind of like a tanky build with your Iceborne and Abyssal Mask, and it works to some extent. Whereas in the mid lane, you do go your Glass Cannon build with your Hextech Proto about your Lich Bane, a lot more damage. The one of the big issues is that he just gets bullied out of mid lane because champions like Yasuo, Aurelia, they're just so much stronger uh, than Echo in that mid lane, and Echo needs to rely on those roams after pushing in the wave to be relevant. So that's why Echo is kind of out of this meta at the moment. But with the Graves and Diana bands as well, we are seeing. Graves, a strong jungler, and quite an interesting ban from the Diana, who can be flex mid and jungle, but does have a bit of a lackluster, uh, well, lackluster laning phase or lackluster early game till six because she is quite useless without the mobility. Yeah, but well, we see a Garen. Now I've seen a lot of Garen coming out of this patch. Not just this patch, this patch, previous patch. Garen is coming back, and <laughs> I see the look on your face, but it's not uncommon to see a Garen anymore. Yeah, so one of the big issues of Garen is that if he falls behind, he's like Mundo with less survivability in combat. Um, he does have an Execute, which is good, but Garen only has a Silence and uh, like a lot of tenacity. He's, he's in many ways very similar to how Mundo works, um, but he does have a quite problematic... Uh, it does become quite problematic if he doesn't actually get ahead. Um, so Garen is very exploitable, has very predictable trade pattern, but is still a very powerful champion all around. And um, if he gets true damage on the champion of choice, he can shred them whether they're another tank or not. Yeah, and especially with Stormraiser, that's... <laughs> that you, seen... that silence. Oh. I, have, I have seen oh. that Stormraiser build, and it <laughs> is disgusting. It is terrible. That and, um... Uh, Dark Harvest. Oh my yeah, god, it's terrible. it's like you literally it's like hey look there's a massive tank running towards me and uh that 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 I'm dead. Wow. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. just from one queue. But yeah. we'll focus on the final picks. We have a Gragas coming in as well as a Poppy on the side of Melbourne and a LeBlanc in the mid lane. Indeed. So with the Gragas, that's great engage, great disengage, decent jungle clear. Um I do believe that he is He's, he's very good for basically ensuring that you have the disengage. So if a Garen's running towards you, you can just keep him off your uh, backline pretty easily because that's all Garen can do, which is he wants to go for that backline. So Gragas is a very good pick for that, as well as keeping the LeBlanc off your carries. And one of the great picks here is the Poppy. So LeBlanc wants to get in there. And not only is Gragas good disengage, but Poppy is good disengage. You pop that W and LeBlanc, whether she wants to get in or whether she wants to get out, she's not going to be able to. She's stuck wherever Poppy wants her to be. So, really good pick up there from Melbourne High School E-League. But as for the LeBlanc pick, LeBlanc into Ariana. LeBlanc has to win these all-in trades and avoid the harass from Ariana. And that is how LeBlanc is going to be able to snowball this lane, get these ropes to the side lanes, and really shut down the side lanes, allowing uh, Roxburgh College 1 to be able to, uh, well, get that lead. Yeah, and... <clears throat> They don't have, Roxburgh College don't have much in a way of tanks, so we do see a lot of diving, we do see a lot of pick, uh, champion picking, like, oh, what's the word, diving onto the squishies. Yeah, they, they pretty much, a good, good diving into the back line with the Kane and the LeBlanc, um, but however, with Kane, if Kane, if they decide to go uh, red Kane, that is a lot of tankiness, and it can help shut down the Poppy Gragas, and Lulu can turn any other champion into a pseudo tank with uh, the... With, his, with the ultimate. So really, really interesting pick there. So they do have, um, they are looking at a kind of a, both teams actually looking at kind of like a mid game team comp because you do have the Ezreal for that damage. You have the LeBlanc. Now both of those champions do fall off as the game gets later. For the Jin, Jin once again, he's a great mid game champion, great laning champion. Um, and he does scale rather well with the damage, but he just doesn't have the DPS that you get from an auto attack based AD carry. As for the Ariana, Ariana is one of the lower damage mid laners, but still a high damage mid laner and great utility. Um, I mean, her poke is amazing, especially once she gets to those two items. She just, she, her poke is just phenomenal. One Q, one W onto one target like LeBlanc or Kane or Ezreal, even Lulu, that takes about a chunk of their, that takes a huge chunk of their health gone. Especially if you go electric, which I have seen some people take on Ariana. So you get the Q, W, 
and then you land an auto and electric proc and immediately people are uh, they're half health so oriana can be played quite like uh, quite handily as this kind of a uh, poke kind of mage with uh and with the gragas and pike you have this amazing board delivery system so you can get those key shockwaves off and it's going to be hectic as hell however this ezreal one of the one things we have to notice is it's going to be very hard to engage on this lineup because you have the ezreal you have the leblanc you have the cane you have a lot of mobility from the side of roxburgh college on board um surveillance with that amazing name i'm sorry that is just amazing um he's gonna if, even if you get onto him he can just go into one of your tanks and just the upper trespass i believe it's called and he can he can just avoid so much damage as well as healing up as soon as he comes back up if he gets on the grag or gets onto the poppy then he, he pretty much he can pretty much like use that as a way into the back line um so yeah it's going to be interesting to see who can do this better. It looks like it's a more standard team fight comp on the side of Melbourne High School E-League um, against like a kind of diving comp on the side of uh, Roxburgh College number one. So we, we're going to see how this goes. It'll be very interesting, to be honest. Yeah, it should be, especially with the amount of protection that uh, Melbourne High School have for their AD carry. Now, they've picked, they've picked Jin, who's going to come into the game later than Ezreal. And so they're going to have to protect that Jin until he comes online. And Storm Rain, one item is not going to do it. Two items not going to do it. You have to wait till three items. And the question is, will Melbourne High School be, be able to stall until his third item? Oh, a Jin. One of the good things about Jin is that he scales with um, attack speed um, with his damage. So he does, he does have that better mid-game than most ADCs. However, I do believe that Ezreal does beat him out at two item power spike. Three items, though, I do believe Jin starts to really come online. And that fourth shot, especially if you're running press, uh, Hail of Blades, which he is. Beautiful. You can do so much work. You can do so much damage with that um, with the Hail of Blades. Your first three attacks do so much damage. You've got your Storm Razor for your first attack. You get extra attack damage because your attack speed in Hail of Blades. And then your fourth shot just crit for an absolute ton. So this is a dangerous... Uh, is a very dangerous comp to deal with for um for Rock Dark College number one. Yeah, it definitely is. And so we're just gonna head into the loading screen, see how this one plays out. But I'm very excited to see how they're gonna be able to utilize this Oriana, Melbourne High School. They've got, as you said before, they have quite a bit of dive potential with the Poppy, with the Gragas, even with the Pike. And the question is, if the Oriana, if the ball delivery system goes very well, will Will Roxburgh College be able to retaliate with the amount of divers they have, with the amount of assassins they have on their side? Indeed. And so we are finally getting into the game. So quick recap of what we have. We have Poppy in the, uh, on the side of Melbourne High School E-League. We have Poppy in the top lane, Gragas in the jungle, Ariana in mid lane, Jin in ADC, and we do have the Pike, the, uh, the terror from the deep in support on the side of Roxburgh College number one. We do have the uh, Garen in the top lane, the Kane in the jungle, LeBlanc in the mid, Ezreal ADC, and Lulu in support. This is game one of today, Melbourne High School E-League versus Roxburgh College 1, and we are a go. Yeah, but while you were talking, giving them a brief rundown of every champion that's on the screen, <laughs> <laughs> we did see a bit of uh, cheeky cheekiness coming out from both teams. Melbourne High School went a bit deeper with this one. They went into the jungle, and they might be able to catch out Noxus Might. They are looking oh. to lock down the oh. Garen, and with the amount of CC they have, oh. they might just be able to get him. Can they? Okay, they started Noxus Might. He is alone there. He's not gonna, they're not going to be able to do anything with it. They don't have CC as of yet, unfortunately. But they are aware that the jungler, um, sorry, Surveillance is doing blue buff. So they know they're doing the blue buff. So what's probably going to happen is Kane, as such an early game jungler, is probably just going to invade for the red and then take bottom side scuttle as well. So um, it is pretty much going to be a buff trade. Um, however, the poppy is going to get to lane later. So might be uh, might be getting to level two later than the Garen. And this might be problematic for a poppy if this, uh, oh, with how this goes. 99.95 ATAR. Now we've seen him in the mid, haven't seen him in the top lane. So this is going to be interesting see how he plays out this different ball game indeed and he is taking some unfavorable traits there and 
Garen is probably going to try and go all in at the level two. But of course, Poppy's actually doing quite a decent job of just trading him down. And it's pretty much just nullified any possible any possible uh, chance of the Garen going all in level two. So really well played there by 95. Oh, he's going in deep. Noxious might. He's popped a couple of health pots. And he's going to be able to stay alive for the rest of this fight. But not a fight anymore. He's just getting poked down by that passive. 99.95. He's going all in now. A couple more auto attacks. A good flash coming up. But no. He's going to be able to pick it up and survive. Actually, no, he's not. Noctis Might returns the blood. But that is first blood for the side of the poppy. So that is a little bit of a good advantage. Oh, but we do see Kane in this bot lane now. Surveillance does a bit. And he's going to be able to poke him down. But not enough. A couple autos. From Jin should be able to do it, gets the crit off onto Lulu. Termis, however, is trying to return the favor. He's not going to be able to get anything from it. And that was so much poke from Termis during that fight. So even though the Kang did get locked up, I do believe the trade was actually won by um, uh, Roxburgh College. They definitely uh, they definitely chunked both Liquid Sandwich and Hoexy. So it oh, there's quite a bit of fighting going into the top lane. 99.95 Tar. Oh. He might be going in deep. Noxious might. He might have walked a bit too far. Pronoms here to help him out. Noxious might has quite a bit of health. He uses it on minion to get a bit closer. Spin to win, boys. As Pronom actually kills him. Yep, and Pronom there with the electric Gragas does have quite a bit of burst. And of course, the both flashes in that top lane were burnt. Um, so Garen was not able to actually get away, and Pronom definitely had the flash if he needed to help uh, close that gap. But of course. It's Noxus Might is not having a good time, but of course he is a traitor to his own people who's uh, supporting Demacia here. So, of course, maybe he does deserve it. Um, well, look. <laughs> <laughs> just because just because he's playing in, in as as a Garen doesn't mean that he's traitorous towards no no Noxus. They're sworn enemies. So yeah. Demacia and Nox hate each other. But, but what if Garen's a spy? So the king of Demacia who leads the troops to Demacia. I thought that was Jarvan. Oh, Jarvan three. Oh, oh no, he's dead. Yeah, Jarvan four. Jarvan four. Oh, the person who leads the troops of Demacia. That that's he's a general though. He's yeah, he leads the troops. So why would he be a spy? <laughs> <laughs> and back to the game, guys. <laughs> that's enough talking about the lore. So. If we, if we actually look at how this game's gonna go, so this Gragas is going to go the AP item first Ooh. to do more impact. But speaking of Gragas, they're gonna be able to pull Lulu back in. Fresh Produce is gonna get stunned up quite a bit. He's behind the enemy lines, trying to get a bit of damage, but Jin is gonna be able to escape from that one. Pronom picking up the second kill of the game. Up in the top lane, however, there's a lot of action coming up here. Kane's walking, Surveillance is on his way. Seeing if he can pick up anything onto 99.95. A lot of damage coming out from Noxious Might as he returns a lot of blood. Mm, indeed. And Pronob is doing a lot of work right now. That is two ganks and that is two kills. He's all, But he is, he is going to lose out on farming compared to the Kane because of how fast Kane's jungle pathing is. But... It's still, it's still as, a, as this Gragas goes on, he's going to become a very tanky disengaged tank. Uh, tank. And if he does go the um the AP item first, he does actually get quite a lot of burst potential. Oh, but in the mid lane, Voice of Voiceless has to use the flash to escape from that one. A good disengage, however, as Pronom is here to join the fight. He's gonna get spotted out by that um that clone, however. So he's gonna he's gonna get caught out. Yep. So that clone had didn't know what was coming and uh <laughs> didn't die. They didn't they didn't attack it. You gotta kill one before you kill the other. <laughs> Yeah, so if he did kill that clone, then that'd be 25 gold in his pocket. So exactly. that's that's quite the gold influx. So it's it's uh, disappointing that it wasn't able to kill that in time. Oh, but 99.95 really wants another fight. He gets a little bit of damage on the Noxus Might, but he's going to just back off from this one. And of course, he didn't pick up that shield in time. So it's quite disappointing for the pop. He doesn't get the extra shielding for about 2.5 seconds. So... Um... <laughs> Very but, specific. But yeah, so Poppy, uh, one thing we have to know is that Poppy has actually been running the airy, so that when he does use that shield auto attack, um, it does actually get that little bit of extra damage, which does slowly chunk down the Garen. And one thing to know is the Garen's passive is pretty much being kept under wraps because of the Poppy's um, auto uh, range auto attack. So really well done here by uh, 99. 9 5 oh, and he's gone to pick up the shield, but Noxious Might is doing well to capitalize on top. 
However, there's no one there to support, and Noxious Might doesn't know if he's going to win the trade. Mm. And Noxious Might does have the six, so he does have that uh, that amazing execute true damage. So it, Poppy has to be very careful here that Noxious Might doesn't actually go for an all in and win it. Oh, but 99.95 is going in. Noxious Might, he's trying to return a spin to win. He does have ulti up, as you said, uses it, but it's not going to be enough to secure the kill onto 99.95 Aton. Mm. And Garen actually took, uh, Noxus Mike did actually take a lot of harass there from the minion wave. So he is almost as low as his own lane counterpart, but because he doesn't have the ultimate now, it's, he can't, he, he's going to have to wait a little while before he can start trading again. He has to hope that the villain starts coming up on the poppy, so he gets that true damage. And that's when he's going to be able to start uh, trading. And Pronome is back, he's flashed for it, but Thresh Produce, he's going to get brought back. Jin picks up the kill under that one. A good ulti from Pronom as well to help bring back Termis. A really good stopwatch coming out, but will that be enough to stop? No. Jin picks up a double kill. And Melbourne High School E League is car. Oh, they're. Oh, the Melbourne High School. Sorry. They're, they're currently running away with this game. We do have Pronom. He's 2 0 2. He's been involved in 80% of the kills so far. And they're just going to be able to get a free Drake at this point. Yeah, they should be able to take it this up very easily. Surveillance is with there with a double buff. He's walking into three members. He does have ulti, but will he be able to use it in time before he dies? Four members now as Jin goes on a killing spree. Indeed, and now Jin, he's got the BF sword already, and he's just absolutely shredding. They are going to be able to get a free Drake from this, and up in the top lane, we still have this wet noodle fight going on as these guys get tankier and tankier. They're just not going to be able to get killed. No, they're not anymore. 99.95, he's setting the pace of this top lane. However, Noxious Might is getting fairly tanky and will be able to deal with the amount of poke that 99 is trying to dish out. So, I don't know how this is going to play out, but both members have teleport. Mm, indeed, and as soon as Noxious Might actually does get the... Uh, um, gets As soon as he gets the uh, Black Cleaver, he's going to be able to start shredding the armor of Poppy. And Poppy has a lot of armor. 25% shred of that is a huge oh, deal. But he's diving. Will he be able to get a couple more autos off or will the turret? A good flush coming out from Noctis Might. He's taking quite a bit of minion aggro. And that's going to be a good one coming out from a 99. Indeed. And he flashes back under a tower, but he doesn't account for that minion aggro. 99.95 Atar gets out with a little bit to spare. And I think he deserves that Atar score at this point because of how much he is shutting down this Garen. But he's playing League of Legends. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> we do have. So as you can see, across the board at the moment, Rockford College one is struggling here. 3,000 gold deficit at 10 minutes. Um, they are 30 CS down in the mid lane, which we haven't actually accounted for. And at 10 minutes already, the Jin does have his Stormraiser to just a sheen from the Ezreal. This Jin is huge. His first attack is doing so much damage. First three are doing a massive amount. He oh, is shredding. Pike really wants to get surveillance. A good ulti save his life. Umbral trespass on the Jin, but he is left for dead as Jin goes with a fourth kill. And Jin currently is on a rampage. He is doing so much work, and he is reaping the benefits of having the jungler camp his lane and getting fed. This ADC is going to be, it's going to be massive come the mid game. He's already massive now. He has a massive 1,200 gold lead over this Ezreal, and Ezreal needs to start building towards this uh, oh, building towards this Iceborne. Otherwise, he's gonna be shredded like crazy every time he comes into combat. So this is scary point of when you deal with Jin. He has so much lockdown, so much CC, and with with the Storm Razor and with the Halo Blades, all of his autos do so much extra damage. It is a scary sight to behold. It is definitely very scary. And the first auto is going to be a problem as well as the fourth. Storm Razor is amazing on Jin, but we I really want to see Termis come back into the game, use everything he can to stop the amount of movement speed that Jin can pull out. That Icebone Gauntlet is going to come in very handy if he gets to it. Indeed. But we do have, um, so we do have the, uh, another dive happening in top lane. Oh, but a good Shockwave lane. Might. They're not going to be able to pick it up. One more auto attack with Airy. Will Voices be able to pick up? No, he won't. Noxious Might is very tank. Oh, I mean, he's healthy. <laughs> He does have a lot of health with the Phage and the Ruby Crystal, but of course, he is so far behind because of the 130 stat line. And Poppy is actually almost building, has almost got that Sunfire Cape, does have the Bomby, so he's got the lane pressure. And 
Noxus Mahi is just be getting the direst treatment right now. He's being left out alone to dry as he just consistently gets power dived by this tanky Poppy and Gragas. It's just a problem for Noxious Might right now. And we do see Liquid Sandwich. He's going invisible. See if he can pick up anything. He lands a hook. No, he doesn't actually. And that's going to be a really good disengage. Good jukes coming out from Fresh Produce. And right there, Liquid Sandwich tried to get everything down, but did miss everything. Um, that was that was really good juking from Thresh Produce, and he was able to make sure that he's he's staying healthy. And this is probably the best uh, best reaction to getting uh, you know, screwed up in this lane so far. So it does look like they are trying to just equalize and just trying to farm up. But this Edgar still doesn't have the tier stacking yet. No, he really needs to back and get that. He's sitting with 1,600, 1,700 gold in his pocket, and that's definitely enough to upgrade his item. The problem is that he can't back without losing so many minions. Indeed, and it's a question of whether he goes for the double tier build or he goes for the the just a single tier build, which is more of a mid game kind of a uh, oh build. So which might be what he needs to do because of how far behind he is and how far his team is behind because they do need to just survive into this mid game rather than go for that scaling late game. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, but this Jin right now is just huge. Now we did see Pronom in the top lane while 99.95 was in the mid lane, but Pronom's going to join the rest of his team in the mid lane and they're looking to take some towers. Indeed. It does look like they're just trying to get this pressure mid, trying to get the first tower oh, down. Oh, pressure mid as we talk about. So, forced to flash over the wall. He was not able to walk through it as he usually does because they just dish out too much damage. Indeed, but one of the things they are having a problem with is the fact that Garen is actually just getting free reign in this top lane, farming up and getting that tower damage. He's, he was uh, he was equal in CS with the Poppy, but now he's got that 20 CS lead because of how alone he's been left. But Oh, 99.95 really stops the dash coming out from Venomous, but they're going to be able to disengage with this one. Liquid Sandwich doesn't land the ulti. Indeed, and so right there, we do have the flash coming out for LeBlanc. That is a lot of mobility gone, but LeBlanc, let's face it, LeBlanc is mobile, is mobile as hell. So, not going to be too much of a problem. But of course, Garrett's trying to make a roam to the mid lane, but he knows he can't do anything, so he's just going to go back top. First tower gold over to Melbourne High School, and... It's going to be a question of where uh, Melbourne High School go from here. They've got the map now open up. They have Dragon up in eight seconds. Rift Herald is still up for another five minutes. So it's it's a question of where do they want to go and how do they want to do it? Now we do see the Rod of Ages being picked up by Voice of Voiceless. So he's going to have an item advantage over Venomous Souls. Mm. And, because, and he's gone for the Rod of Ages because it gives you a lot of tanky stats to help deal with this Assassin LeBlanc. And he has got this huge CS lead, like 40 CS lead in this mid lane. He's, got, he's already got his Saucer Shoes, so he's got that flat 18 Magic Pen, which is massive in this early game. Um, as for the Gragas, because the Gragas might actually be starting to prep for this, uh, for this uh, Dragon, to be honest. So Surveillance might be sticking around, but it's, it's I don't... It's... It's a question of whether this might be worth it. They oh, they do get some vision on him. They pull back up. <laughs> CC for days as Jin goes on a killing spree as well. Up in the top lane though, 99.95 Atar is taking quite a bit of aggro. Returning it, however, to Noxious Might. He's got a shield on his side. He's looking to end this one. He tries to get him into a wall, but he's not going to be able to do so. Will Noxious Might be able to survive this? With the ulti, 99.95 using the brush, he flashes for it. Good flash return coming out from Noxious Might as he barely escapes with a sliver of health. Indeed, and there we see the item advantage coming from the Poppy. Garen is supposed to be the better 1v1 champion, but because the the Tabai and the Bami Cinder, Poppy's able to do so much work. And of course, Garen has the Black Cleaver, but that armor shred just isn't enough at the moment. Termes has picked up the phage and he's paying for it. He flashes the wrong way, almost into the hook as a flash coming out from Liquid Sandwich. The turret's not there to help you anymore as Jin picks up another kill onto Termes. This is not looking good anymore. Yep. Oh. oh, that was a really good stun coming out from 99.95. He's going to be able to pick up a solo kill. And Noxus Might was doing so well just to basically stay alive right there. And even with uh, such... As such the bad the bad trade that he took earlier but of course then he just got absolutely destroyed so that is now three towers to nothing on the side of my high school that is a seven 
thousand gold lead at 17 minutes this lead is nearly insurmountable especially because of how this meta is at the moment what they need to do is they need to get this shutdown on the Jin, who's looking to build like a static shiv or it would that be a rapid fire even a rapid fire or a static shiv it's either or at this stage in the game but we do see termies has picked up the phage instead of going for the Iceborne Gauntlet first. Yep, so he is rushing for that Triforce. That is more damage, but less tankiness, considering how big this Jin is right now. That might be a problem. Oh, but of course we did. Cheeky. We did see a little bit of a cheeky uh, recall cancel, but no one's there to really back up Liquid Sandwich. So we are seeing how this... um. So we are seeing quite the invades right now, quite the topside vision control from Melbourne High School. This might just be a, a, a fort towel for them before 18 minutes. Yeah, they should be able to take this fairly easily. Liquid sandwich on the side, making sure that they don't cheat, they don't get a creep. Uh, well, anything past them. And they're going to use Rift Herald as well, looking to take another turret. Indeed, they are starting to push down this mid lane. Uh, are getting a lot of work done. Oh, that Rift Herald is disgusting with that damage. But of course, he is going to get shut down before they can actually take this tower. So. Uh, debatable barrier, uh, debatable rift, uh, herald usage there, but still, this does mean that they have so much of the map open, but they don't have late pressure in either top or bottom, so they are gonna have to reset and just try and push out those waves again and go for another objective. Dragon is up though, so there's one thing they could make a play towards now. Yeah, it's definitely something that could help them get an even bigger gold advantage, especially with a cloud drake. Those rotations will be so annoying to deal with. Mm. But we, we're looking a massive item discrepancy. So on LeBlanc, we're just seeing the Luden's Echo. So that is a lot of burst potential. Um, the Kane has gone the Mobility Boots, but this is 0-3 Kane. Kane relies on those base stats. I don't even know if he's transformed yet. Oh, but he is looking for something onto Voice of Voices. Another flash coming out. A really good Shockwave coming out. A root onto him. However, Umbral Trespass is not enough damage. Really good ulti coming out from Curtain Call. And that's going to be able to pick up a double kill onto the enemy. Indeed, and right there we see this Jin 8 0 1. 10,000 gold lead almost for the side of Melbourne High School. And, not, and then we go back to the wet noodle fight in the top lane. This is ballsy as hell. Yeah, well, there's nothing Noxious Mike can do against this massive poppy. And look, Fresh Produce is getting hammered in this mid lane. A couple more autos, and he's going to be able to pick up. Pranam's going to be able to go on a killing spree. That's the jungler tank, by the way. Noxious Might getting a solo kill finally on 99.95 ADAR. That true damage does help a lot. Indeed, the true damage. You do have the Black Cleaver with the Armor Shred. And here we're starting to see the Garen pick being used for what it's worth. Um, we don't have the Iceborne going on the Poppy, so he doesn't have that Spellblade. Uh, we're just seeing pure tanky stats. So even though he's able to absorb a lot of damage, that Black Cleaver shred from the Garen, that true damage on the ultimate, and even if the passive, if uh, Poppy's the villain, we are going to start seeing the split push be won by the Garen. Yeah, the split push is finally, Garen's finally going to be coming online, especially with that passive. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with in those side lanes, and they need to utilize this to, if they have any chance of getting back in the game, they need to use it. Indeed. Um, but... It's one of those things like we have a 70 CS lead in this mid lane. It's Oriana is doing an amazing job of CSing. This Jin is huge right now. He has got BF Sword, his Boot Swiftness, Rapid Fire, and Storm Razor. He has almost got three items at 21 minutes. This guy is enormous. Uh, and it's it, oh, yeah. oh. quite, quite literally, um, Roxburgh College have a 10,000 gold deficit at 21 minutes and what they have to do is they have to try and stall this game out but with the ocean drake there's so much siege potential from her over in high school uh with the cloud drake they're going to be an out rotate this cane the cane is gonna oh 99.95 going on to thresh produce he's not having a good day venomous souls however is gonna get taken down fairly quickly he's not dead yet humble trespass has been used onto Jin, but he's too big to be dealt with and so surveillance taking quite a bit of shots down goes the Ezreal and the Pike as well. Voice of Voiceless gets his first kill of the game, actually, as they really want to take down Noxious Mind. One more auto from Pronom picks that one up. But, uh, Venomous Souls really wants to take a kill onto Pronom, but look at that support mid laner. A huge flash coming out from Jin. He goes legendary. 
They're going to be able to pick up another one, walk away, and head towards, well, Baron, I hope. Exactly, and there we have cool guys don't look at explosions as they just walk away from the burning rubble that is currently Roxburgh College's base. They uh, they were able to pick up so much there, and all they lost in return for it was the pike. But it looks like they are just going to reset and go for the sideways. The sideways management hasn't actually been quite uh, quite appalling compared to like how much pressure they've had on the map. So uh, Melbourne High School, if they want to start getting this, uh, getting like some kind of uh, extra objective, they're going to have to try and make sure they manage these side waves and get them pushing up, maybe get a, uh, a ZZ up because we all know that rip banner of command, it is no longer a part of this game. Yeah, unfortunate. That's that's an unfortunate item that Pro will surely miss. Indeed, I miss the days of basically having a six-man team against their five-man team. Definitely, and if you have everyone picking up banner, it's a ten-man team against a five-man team. Go banner, ZZ rot. You go your Mordecai, you go your Yarik. You have a dragon. You have a a, a, a mistress. You have five bannered up minions. Yeah, but that's not this game. As we see, surveillance really trying to go into Jin. Use the humble trespass. Gets a bit of damage. Uses as liquid sandwich. Picks up a kill into surveillance, but a good return onto the carry of the game. First produce is left for dead as Noxious Might really wants to get a kill onto Liquid Sandwich. He's turning back around, but that's not going to be enough. Enough as 99 picks up a kill. A really good ulti coming out from Orianna as well. She's going to be able to go on a double kill there. A good disengage coming out from Termes as he tries to dash away. Liquid Sandwich is going to miss that hook as Termes barely escapes with his life. But that is the shutdown gold. From the gin, that is 950 gold into the Garen. If Garen split push was annoying before, it is going to be deadly now. But of course, this does mean the majority of Team Roxburg is down. So they are going to be out of the Melbourne High School is going to be able to make a play for this Baron. But without the gin, they don't have the DPS they really want. Um, so this will take a long time to uh, to burst this down. They, yeah, I'm sure that Jin will be there before they uh take it down and definitely but we do see surveillance heading towards this baron pit maybe looking for a potential steal they do have vision on him so they're looking to take it down fairly quickly 2000 health 1000 health and the smite comes through oriana picks it up though and the extra ultimate is coming in and all it does is cancel the recall for the Kragas and the uh poppy but there's a three second recall uh that is a easy baron Thirteen thousand gold lead for the side of melbourne high school it's it's going to be very difficult, but Roxburgh College has a possibility of coming back. They need to stall out this Baron. They need to get the pick onto the Jin. They need to shut down this Jin because without the Jin, the majority of the damage is no longer there. And as this game goes longer and longer, these this gold deficit is not as serious. But thirteen thousand gold is very hard, like amount to to match, to be honest. Oh, but we do see surveillance. He's stuck with the blue buff, and he by himself a really good ulti but that's not going to be good enough valence is going to use his humble trespass really good outplay pronoun bringing him right back into the fray as he picks up a kill onto surveillance and they have this the push going in this bottom lane they do have the cannon minion as well even though the cannons are a little bit of health left but of course with the baron buff they have so much siege potential and poppy uh, he doesn't come in to him. Does not indeed. His pronoun really goes for the AD carry. He's left alone. His Termes is there to fend for himself. They're able to pick up the inhibitor turret in the middle of this. And 99.95, not even past half health, as he just stays very much alive. They really want to take a kill here. Liquid Sandwich, a really good hook to disengage. A really good shockwave as well, landing on two members. Noxious Might is all by himself in the back line as he's going to get picked up by Pronom. Surveillance, you just spawned and now you're dead. Goodbye, Fresh Produce. He's the focus of this one now. Ultimate uses a double kill going over to Jin. They really want to take another kill as, oh my gosh, those auto attacks are dirty. And with that fight, the song that brings to mind is the ads go marching one by one as Rockburg has walked you their death. And that is a victory, a well-deserved victory from Melbourne High School. Um, they won 26 to 4, 9 towers to 0, they got both drakes, they got the Baron, they, they, there really wasn't a point where they didn't look in control, aside from the, uh, Garen pretty much being <laughs> the only one to actually pick up kills on that side with a little, with a one assist from Kane, so 
This was a disastrous match from the side of Roxburgh and an amazing match from Melbourne High School. So Roxburgh College is probably going to go back, rethink that strategy, and then have to come back next week with a new game plan because this was an absolute stomp. Yeah, it definitely was. And so that's going to be the game between Melbourne High School and Roxburgh College 1. Uh, Rox <laughs> Roxburgh College, the blue team, sorry. And... Yeah, so this is that was that was wait. Melbourne High School was what? Melbourne High School's on the blue side. Oh Melbourne High School was blue. Yeah, so it's like Yeah, so Melbourne High School was on the blue side, yes. Um Thank you, manager Yuna. <laughs> getting us a bit of a is giving us a misinformation, misleading comments. Um so Melbourne High School, blue side smash that game and Roxburgh College unfortunately did not uh did not win but they are going to be back next week with a vengeance so guys um we are going to take a short break and uh still an hour and a half yeah gonna take a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a break and then we will be back <laughs> yeah we will be back with uh the next game at seven o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time Colby Catholic College versus Apple Cross Senior high school, team A. <laughs> Guys, stay tuned. <laughs>